Welcome back to What You Will Learn. My name is Adam Ashton. G'day, good evening, good morning. My name is Adam Jones. We just spoke to Franz Johansson. He is an absolute beast. <laughs> he is a beast. Uh, so he wrote the first book was The Medici Effect and then the book we did uh, just recently, The Click Moment, which we reckon is an absolutely phenomenal business book. Like seriously, one of the one of the better ones. One of the best, mate. It was probably the, the most effort we've put into getting someone I'd say, yeah. as, a, as an author. Like we did The Click Moment. We re- actually recorded that yeah. a lot. A fair while ago. It's gone back a fair while and for, you know, three or four months we've been trying to get friends and we've yeah. been pestering his assistant and we finally got there. Yeah, he's an absolute legend. Uh, I just love the way he talks and he's got so many examples of all the things that he talks about and yeah, it's it's phenomenal His stuff. books, I think, man, are probably, and his work is probably the most underrated stuff mm. we've, we've ever come across, I'd say. Yeah, exactly. They're, they're not um, super well known like a good to great or four hour work week. They're not those juggernauts. But in terms of quality, I'd say better. Yeah, I'd rather read that. Um, if you want to look for look for Franz, uh, Franz Johansson, the surname has two S's in it. Um, dot com. He's got a podcast. He's got his own books. Watch a couple of TED talks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Franz. First of all, there's something interesting happening in the world today at large. A certain is increasing. Uh, everywhere um, because uh, there are more change happening and not just change in technology which everybody's aware of but everything else is changing too norms are changing you know it used to be it, it used to be weird to step into a stranger's car mm. now it isn't uh, it used to be weird to have strangers stay in your house uh, now it isn't now it's actually something that's fully acceptable and 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 because of these changes it means that our our ability to predict, to understand what's going to happen in the future drops. It's a, it's a necessary relationship, really. And so um, what's interesting about it, though, is that if you're looking to have success, if you're looking to have opportunity, uh, it really comes from you setting yourself apart from others, one way or another. Um, and in my book, The Click Moment, I talk about really two ways of doing so. One is what I would call a very narrow, straight understanding the way people most understand success. You put in a lot of hard work to become an expert. You can do it. It turns out that's only for a very narrow group of people. Uh, for most of us, success actually comes in very unexpected, serendipitous ways. Hence, we should court uncertainty. We should court serendipity. We should court unexpectedness because that's where we can get success. Nice. And that narrow way you were sort of talking about is, is what I, I guess a lot of people might have heard of, the 10,000-hour rule where you work really hard in one specific thing with uh, fixed rules and fixed boundaries and work really hard and get really good at that one thing. Whereas for most people, the, uh, the uncertainty, the, there's no rules, so they need to find the, these click moments. So I guess what, what are these click moments that you talk about and sort of where, how can we recognize them? Where, where are they? Right. So, I mean, and, and let me just make an extra point around this 10,000 hour rule because it is, it is interesting, right? You have today a whole, a whole body of, of, of assumptions that go into how most people, how most, most entrepreneurs, uh, most executives think about how success, how success happens. And it, it is this idea around expertise. It's this idea around rational analysis of an opportunity. And that works really well if, no one is changing the rules. And then in the book, I talked a lot about tennis, for instance. I talked a lot about chess. Guess what? It works. Serena Williams cr- is, you know, crushes it because she has put in 10,000 more, much more than 10,000 hours. Mm-hmm. Uh, her, success is lo- her success is logical. Uh, her success is based on expertise. And it doesn't really work for anybody else because if the rules can change, then what are you supposed to invest 10,000 hours into? Right, that's why Richard Branson could start an airline despite the fact that he had no experience in airlines and still mm-hmm. come out ahead. So that whole thing is, is a piece that is both, uh, it's, it's challenging for people to grasp. And so the immediate question then comes to, well, okay, I get what you're saying, and, but then what am I supposed to do? Because what you're saying is that I can't really rely on, 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 a, on a rational exploration of, of new opportunities or, or just on 10,000 hours to get there, what else am I supposed to do? And it turns out that there is a way of doing it. And I, in the book, I call it click moments. I call this, this 
idea of um, addressing the first question we had, which is around uncertainty and serendipity, I, I, I basically say that it comes in a few different ways, and the, perhaps the most the most interesting of those ways are click moments. These are moments in time where you have an, an unexpected insight, an unexpected meeting, an unexpected result. And the reason it's unexpected was because you didn't plan for it. If you're an expert in something and, 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 and something happens and it was unexpected, it means that you, you, you saw it and you experienced it, but, but, you, but you didn't expect the basic expertise. So it wasn't, it wasn't a result of a logical analysis. And those are super valuable. That's where we find the, the, the breakthroughs in how, you know, um, uh, Nike discovers its, uh, its breakthrough soul pattern. It, it's how, it's how uh, Spielberg manages to make Jaws an exceptional movie, not because of the things he planned for. It was the things that he didn't plan for. And these quick moments reveal tremendous opportunities for us to become successful if we're capable of paying attention to them. Yeah, nice. So how do we, how do we uh, invite more click moments into our life? And does this apply for, say, a big corporate business as well as the individual trying to, I guess, get more success in their life? It, it, it applies for both. And as it turns out, although corporate businesses tend to be afraid of use, uh, inviting click moments, uh, they're the ones best able to do so and to capitalize on them when they happen. I'll tell you why in a second. So the way we invite click moments is it is essentially to invite the unexpected. And, 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 and that sounds, putting it that way makes it almost impossible. How are you supposed to do that? Um, and so the, the approach that we help you know, our, our, our clients um, uh, to do this and the listeners can take in, in, their, own, in their own life and your listeners can take in, in their own lives is to expose yourself to opportunities, to people, to insights that are not in your field of expertise, that are not within your obvious domain or culture or whatever else. Because that's when you're going to have these unexpected click moments. You, you may be, so if you, are, if you are somebody that is, like I mentioned Richard Branson earlier, if you are in the music industry, you have a record company, and you just all you're doing is sort of talking to other players in this space. You're going to come up with roughly the same type of ideas that others in this industry are, come up with. I see this all the time. Um, mm-hmm. Let's say you make swimwear, and you're talking to other swimwear manufacturers and and people that wear them, and you you will tend to have similar ideas. You might catch sort of trends, but others could have caught them earlier. What if you talk? And get insights, inspiration from completely different places. And and in uh, in Australia, which was really the the home country for the burkini, I talk about that in the click moments. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what Hida Sinetti did, right? So she's like, "What happens if I combine a bikini and a burka? What, what could I come up with?" It's unexpected. It's surprising. Um, and she had a click moment that gave her this insight, and she pursued it. Uh, we create click moments by inviting difference into our lives. Nice, I love it. And one of the big things you talk about in the click moment is these uh, purposeful bets, in that you have to. Yeah. I guess my my interpretation is you got to keep trying different things, but you can't be putting all your eggs in one basket. You can't be betting everything on the the first project or the first little thing that you try. You need to uh, have small bets and many of them. Is that sort of right? That is right. Um, you know, many people would say when uh, so. Uh, let's take an example that I that I think drives this point home um, pretty quickly. When, but most people that have uh, that are listening to this have been exposed to a game called Angry Birds, and mm-hmm. um, uh, and it's kind of out of fashion now. But it but but it was a game changer for both the iPad and the and the iPhone. It it revealed to the world that there was a much larger industry around gaming on these type of handheld devices that people had even imagined. It was downloaded, you know, hundreds of millions, of billions uh, across the world. And people looked at it and went like, wow, it's like it was an overnight success. <laughs> uh, it was just brilliant. And it is a brilliant game. It, is, it has gorgeous graphics and, 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 and addictive play levels and you get to, you get to, kill, you get to kill pigs <laughs> uh, with birds. 
Like, like who wouldn't want to do that? And the thing about this is, right, is that uh, if they were that brilliant, why did they wait eight years to do it? Because mm. Angry Birds was this company's 52nd game. Yeah. And the message here to anybody listening to this is if you try something 52 times, you'll have a good shot at exceptional success as well. Mm. And that's really what it comes down to. Success, when stripped off of all the legends and myths, are basically a statistics game. I, I love this notion of the fact that Picasso made more crappy artwork than virtually any other artist <laughs> that has lived That's at true. this point. Like, and he did. I mean, he made over 50,000 works of art in his lifetime. And we, I mean, most we are, of them suck. We, we <laughs> get a fraction, yeah, most of them suck, right? So, <laughs> so this, this idea is one that... Uh, so now... Let's say that you now acknowledge this. How do you incorporate that into your life? How do you incorporate it into a, into a strategy? It follows. By necessity, it follows that you have to try mm. more bets. And I call, I call the number of bets that you could try at any given moment the distraction limit because you usually have a core thing that you're doing. It might be your core job. It might be your core business. So the question is, how many bets can you place that are sort of mm. outside of this core? Is it one, two, three, four, at any given time? At some point, you're going to hit a distraction limit. You're going to hit, like, basically, uh, now it becomes negative because you just wait to distract you doing. You can't do 100 bets at the same time. So, so, so it's a good way of, of, of thinking about that. But, but here's the thing that, that when a company has been able to encapsulate that, it becomes powerful. At Apple, um, Oftentimes, when they designed a new user feature, one of the designers was sharing this notion that they create 10 separate teams to come up with 10 separate solutions for this design feature, user feature. Which means that if you're on one of those teams, you have already baked in a guaranteed 90% failure rate. Mm -hmm. So who wants to join a team like that? <laughs> well, the person who knows is going to get another bite at the apple. Yeah. And so that becomes, that becomes this, when you talk about purposeful bets, it means place, yes, many bets. They have to be smaller, also by necessity, because otherwise you're going to run out of capital or resources. And you do that until you hit something that's really surprising the market and maybe even surprising yourself. Yeah, nice. Fantastic. It's such a, a, another, for me, it's another definition of persistence. Like, so some people might persist at the, the, the one idea but what you're saying is, I guess, have 10 different swings or, or, or a lot of bets. And then as soon as something sticks, yes. you, are, you, you go with that. So <clears throat> say something starts to work and one of your bets starts to be paying off, I guess. So what, what do you do next? Right. So, um, so this is where um, one, one basically has to make a choice, right? And and it starts to work. You're getting a, you're getting a, a good feeling. And, and, and people ask, what should I look for? I mean, it's worthwhile taking a couple of seconds to say that. I mean, sometimes it's obvious, right? Uh, whether it's you're getting, maybe it's a, you're getting sales, you're getting, you're getting viewers, or you're getting interest in other ways. There's, there's some type of metric that is beginning to, to sort of have a, a, a rise, sometimes in an exponential fashion. Uh, but I will also say that there's another thing to look for, which is that if, if you're surprised by the bet that you place, if something happens that surprises you, I would pay attention to that. I consider surprise a leading indicator of innovation. And, uh, and you know, when, when, um, when Pfizer went after this heart drug in the mid-'80s, the rest of the heart drug wasn't particularly good. Uh, but yet many of the test subjects kept on asking for more of this drug. <laughs> and they're like, really? Like, it's not very good. And, and they're like, the people saying, well, yeah, yeah, but you should you give us some more of that. It was particularly true of the guys. Okay? <laughs> so, so, so it turns out, right, that this drug had a curious side effect that nobody really counted on, which was the it basically made these guys uh, stand at attention um, and rise to the occasion. <laughs> now, they could have just said, wow, that's a surprise, but that's nothing to what we're doing, right? which, is, mm. which is to focus on the heart drug. But they didn't. Instead, they said, this is a surprise, which means that probably nobody else has thought of this. 
and we should just go with it. We're going to double down on it. That, of course, became Viagra, one of the most successful drugs of all time. And, and my, so the lesson here is whether the metrics are going off the chart or you being truly surprised by something, ask yourself, is this the time to double down? And usually it is. Mm. You, should, you should focus on that. And that's where I now place my efforts to get into a some sort of growth curve for this idea. Nice, love it. Um, as we, yeah, we said the the Click Moment is a, a phenomenal book. We can you talk about uh, your first book, The Medici Effect, as well. And you talked uh, earlier about in the the Click Moment that it's you know finding uncertainty and randomness in people from yeah. other fields. And so the Medici Effect talks about these intersections of different fields. Is that right? That's right. I mean, uh, that, the, the, the medicine effect I wrote first, and what was interesting is that I, I say this thing in that book about how a lot of the, the connections that people make are, are random. I, I don't really place a lot of effort into that point in the book, but that was the seed that I ultimately explored uh, in the click moment. So, so in many ways, um, these books go hand in hand. They, they really are mm. complements to each other. And or, or, or click moment sort of extends and, and completes the argument that I present at the medicine effect. And basically in that book, what I say is the following. You have the best chance of breaking new ground at the intersection of different cultures or industries or fields or disciplines. Um, and, 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 and so I explored why is that? And then what can you do about it, basically? And, um, and it's, it's, a, it's a fascinating idea because... It is. It, it turns out right that it is. It's true. Um, you're you, you're looking at different uh, ways in which people have explored intersection, and it becomes ex, ex, uh, basically the I would say the fundamental driver of innovation. And I often talk about the fact that diversity drives innovation. This idea of bringing together concepts from different cultures and industries and fields. And so. Uh, and I'll just share one example, uh, but what I, what I mean here, and I, this is an example that, that I opened the book with, but, it, but it's probably my favorite example. And it, it is of this architect, he's in Harare, at capital of Zimbabwe, and he has this challenge, right? He's, he has to build uh, one of the largest buildings in Harare, um, but this building is to contain no air conditioning, which, you know, is interesting, because it sometimes gets hot, uh, in Zimbabwe, but he manages to do this by combining his field of expertise, which is architecture, with the field of thermal ecology. And the termites are able to cool their mounds as they build in the African savanna through this whole network of, of, um, of um, uh, basically using air streams around the base of the mound and a cool pool of mud and using vents to lead these air streams in and they can open and close these vents in a particular way. And he took that design principle and incorporated it into the building. It uses 90% less energy than any other building around it and has a temperature steady around 72, 70, 73 degrees Fahrenheit. And so my point here is he didn't break, he broke the ground not because he focused exclusively on architecture mm. uh, or terminal ecology for that matter. He stepped into the intersection of those two and that's where you can find new ideas. Yeah, unreal. So... Say if you're an accountant, an engineer, or a lawyer, or whatever. So, a lot of the time, your work's really could be really siloed. So, what's a specific, you know, action that someone can do who's listening to, I guess, get this mix and get uh, more di- diversity into their into their lives? Uh, yeah, to to be able to innovate a bit more. Yeah, I mean, there's there's so many things that how in how one can approach it. I mean, uh, in the very very short term. Um, like as in right now or the next hour or, or, or the next, next, next day or week, uh, diversify your, 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 where you're getting your insights. Um, are you reading the same types of books or magazines or journals or papers or reports that everybody else in your field are, are studying, uh, that your colleagues are studying? Like if that is the case, Explore what would happen if you listen to something else. And then, this is the most important part, try to make connections between these other things and your work. So if you're an engineer, 
is this something you can learn from the fashion world? Get a fashion magazine. Mm. Next time you go to an airport, buy magazines that you would never ever read usually and use them as a source of inspiration for new ideas. Uh, here's a, another really amazing story around how this actually plays out in the real world. So this hospital in Cambridge in, in the UK had uh, this challenge that when they transferred patients from the surgical units to the intensive care units, you had two separate medical teams essentially that treated this patient, which meant that there were oftentimes confusion, uh, there were lack of communication, uh, which led to errors. And these errors could sometimes be fatal. So the hospital was like, well, how do we fix this? And the obvious solution to this would be to say, well, how have other hospitals fixed this? Um, maybe we should look at that. Maybe we should look at best practices. But they didn't. Actually, what they did was they teamed up with McLaren to understand what happens at a pit stop and with a pit stop crew in a Formula One car race. And they realized that that type of coordination, they lost, they can learn from that. And they did. Mm -hmm. And that model now is called the pit stop model, which is spreading in hospitals around the world. In other words, they gain their insights by gaining inspiration from another, another field. So that's the, that would be the first action somebody listening to this would take. Mm -hmm. the, and, and the second one would simply be more longer term. Can you spend some time in another field? Can you diversify your group of colleagues or friends? So you, in that, can, can invite new perspectives. Mm, that's fantastic. It's interesting to say that, uh, as you say, that you know there's issues in a hospital, but you don't go looking for other hospitals to see what they're doing. You go completely left field. So maybe it is that you know someone who's an accountant and wants to be a really good accountant. Maybe the best way isn't to just become a the next level up in the ladder and keep going. Maybe it is to step outside the field and do something completely different for a little while. That's right. And and actually, what's interesting is that it field the field the field the definition of what it means to be this type of expert is rapidly evaporating. Ask mm. yourself, what does it mean today to be an expert in retail, for instance? Retail is undergoing massive change. And if you ask a quote-unquote retail expert what well, the next five years is going to hold in retail, you're going to get, like, if you ask five experts, you're going to have five different answers. Mm. And if you get five different answers, what does it even mean to be an expert? It means that you're just guessing, just like everybody <laughs> else. And, 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 so, and, and so, so the shelf life of expertise is shrinking. Um, it, 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 is, it is this thing where the more interesting use of expertise is how you combine it with something from another field or another industry or another culture. That's where you're going to find mm. the more interesting nuggets of truth. Yeah. Nice. So you mentioned that uh, the shelf life of expertise is, is shrinking. Is there any, I guess, other industries that are the best to in intersect with for, uh, I guess, for your engineer, accountant, or lawyer, or, or I guess what technology is the best to intersect with or maybe understand with all the, all the change coming? Well, it, you know, it's a great question. I mean, look, obviously, I think it always makes sense uh, in today to be, uh, to, to be exploring elements of technology. That is, that is one thing that, that comes up a lot. But let me tell you, I, I, that's not where the game changers are. Uber did not have brand new technology. That was not where the insight came from. Uh, Airbnb, that's not brand new technology. Um, uh, that's not where the insight came from. Um, so technology is a piece of it for mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. But what is more interesting is to see what is happening in other fields or cultures because norms are changing and they're changing rapidly. So if you're an accountant, for instance, or if you're a lawyer and you ask yourself, okay, well, well what is, what is, how, how do I think differently about what I'm doing? Well, it might be interesting to see how do other businesses or, or industries or fields charge for the business to just pick up on something. This may or may not have anything to do with technology. This is more to do with business model. I mean, these are, these are industries where people are usually charge by the hour, for instance. Mm. Uh, well, you know what? Um, there are tons of other models out there, whether it's subscription, uh, whether, it's, um, whether it's a value-based pricing, whether it is performance. There's, there's all kinds of – and there's innovations happening right now uh, tied up, teed up with various app usage. So if I'm in that field, maybe the innovation isn't how, how I'm using my knowledge to solve a specific problem. It might be how I'm even delivering it in the first place. Mm -hmm. And 
And that's not necessarily going to come from just talking to my colleague because they're still stuck in the old model just as a hospital will be stuck in the old model. Mm, fantastic. The, the, the two phenomenal um, books, the Medici Effect and the Click Moment. Uh, I guess we're also um, keen to hear about what, what does the Medici, the Medici Group do today? Yes. So, um, so what, basically, um, we are taking these ideas in both the Medici Effect and the Click Moment, both books, and we bring them to organizations around the world to help them innovate. We make their cultures far more innovative. Uh, we help them develop breakthroughs, either breakthrough strategies, breakthrough business models, breakthrough products and services, and to execute on them, to implement them, to actually, to actually get them either to market or installed within their organization. And the thing, the way we do that is through, the, through, through diversity. So it, it could involve bringing together cross-functional teams. It could involve bringing together very diverse teams along gender, country, ethnic lines. It could be involved breaking down silos inside of an organization, or it could involve bringing in perspectives from outside of the industry entirely. So, so there, there are, and I just scratched the surface of it. There are mm-hmm. any number of different ways in which we help companies to bring in uh, or, uh, new insight or make use of it it's already in place. It's just that they're not really making use of it. And through that, have serendipitous discoveries, serendipitous uh, moments that we then capitalize on. And so through that, we've been able to help companies like Disney, like, uh, like Nike, uh, like uh, Pfizer, like, um, like IBM, Microsoft, uh, and on and on, in industry after industry after industry, to push the boundary of innovation. And through that, impact how they think about diversity yep phenomenal so as we wrap it up now is there any books that you recommend for our listeners that might have impacted your life or i guess been influential in in the books you you wrote well i mean there are there are (laughs) are many (laughs) books that i've had i i like like you guys i'm a voracious reader i i really try to cover a, a broad range i would um uh, recently, I've been um, uh, looking into. I've been reading books on cosmology uh, and quantum mechanics. I've, I studied it a bit when I was younger, hmm. and uh, what I find fascinating about it is that uh, is how it relates back to um, to many of the ideas that I'm working on right now. So, I recently read a book called um, "Dark Matter and Dinosaurs" by Lisa Randall. Nice. Uh, which which I I would recommend. Uh, it, it is it is accessible, so you don't have to know much about quantum mecha- or anything about quantum mechanics <laughs> or anything about cosmology for for it at all. So she's she's you know, obviously she's written it in a way that that enables people to understand it. But it but it also gives insight into some of the larger questions that are I think surround us in the universe, and it's certainly been helpful in now enabling me to push forward in the work we do at the Messi Group. So. Hmm. Um, that is probably one of the more, more, more recent reads that I would like to put up. And after that, uh, I would simply say that um, there are some books that have had you know, really phenomenal impact. And I, I, I like to recommend um, books that, that help to spur the imagination when I get this question. I mean, most people want to hear about business books, so I can talk about it all day long. Uh, but... Uh, if you haven't read uh, books, so the, the most recent book that I read was a fiction book that I'm still thinking about today uh, was the, was the um, new translation of The Count of Monte Cristo. I can't read it in French, but <laughs> that book um, and the, the, the perseverance that that count has, I draw inspiration from it. So those are some, those are some, those are some thoughts. Yeah, fantastic. Oh. It's a great way to end it. I think it, it's, I guess, quantum mechanics is very similar to, to, I guess, some of the things you talk about, and especially the uncertainty and, and all that kind That's of right. stuff that happens in the, at the quantum level, and it does seem to apply at the business business level as well, as you, are, as you said. You so. got it. That, that, that is actually the connection. And, uh, and, um, and just being able to dig into that more deeply has been fascinating. So uh, we've been actually, Lisa and I have been now 
recently uh, uh, we did a podcast together recently to explore some of these ideas, the intersection between innovation and quantum mechanics, and it's been quite fascinating to see the types of ideas that we've we've landed on. Fantastic. Well, that's <clears throat> that's awesome. They're, as we said, two phenomenal books. Um, I guess just to to finish off, where can people find you? you I know you uh, just. You did season one of your own podcast um, as well. Where can people find you, your books, and other stuff you're doing? Yeah, so so I think the the easiest place is my my um, my you know my my website, which is uh, francejohansson.com. F R A N S J O H A N S S O N dot com. It's just my first and last name, and from there, depending on what one's interested in, whether it's podcasts or speaking or consulting or workshops and all the stuff that we built over the years with the medicine group that now sort of has a global impact on this. Um, or just, hey, shoot an email and say, that was great. <laughs> I'd love to talk. <laughs> uh, reach out. Yeah, awesome. uh, That's the place to do it. Fantastic, friends. Thanks so much. Uh, really enjoyed it. Really appreciated it. And yeah, look forward to hopefully another book sometime soon. Thank you. Yeah, working on it. Hey guys, Adam and Adam here, just reminding you of our competition we have going on. So you can win every single book that we read and review this season. So some absolute juggernauts, three potential ways that you can win. Yep, so the first thing you can do is leave us a review on iTunes. The second is to fill out our survey at whatyouwillearn.com slash survey. And number three, just buy a, buy a book and send us an email of just showing that you bought a book. Yep, so we, uh, we, we love books hope you do too you can win all these books for either yourself or to to give away to people and change a few lives Uh, basically you can enter once or you can enter three times yep get stuck in